Conversation with Ron McLean. Welcome to In Conversation. Today on the show, Akeem Alou and Matt Dumba, defenseman for the Minnesota Wild. The two men are part of the newly announced Hockey Diversity Alliance, which has a number of aims, uh, but the principal aim is to try and eradicate racism and intolerance in the game. As you know, Akeem became an agent of change back in November with a tweet that rocked uh, the establishment. Uh, he's done a number of interviews, and more important, he has had a number of conversations with people in hockey and people in sport, like Colin Kaepernick, to talk about societal issues and speaking out. And then, of course, came the horrific death of George Floyd, uh, which mobilized really the world. And from that movement has begun a number of conversations, and uh, that has forced government, academia, the public, the private sector uh, to speak or to listen. Matt Dumba, who's part of this group. So Evander Kane and Akeem will be the co-heads of the alliance. And for now, they've mentioned seven, but they will expand that. Matt's one of the members, uh, a group. He's a hockey player from Calgary, Alberta who played junior in my hometown with the Red Deer Rebels. His second season was his first full season, and he was Western Hockey League Rookie of the Year with a fantastic performance that year. He's been a captain, a lot of international success. Captain at the Ivan Halinka. He was at the World Juniors in 2014 and a member of the 2016 gold medal champions at the IIHF. You know, uh, as all of us are trying to figure out roles in this conversation, uh, I go back to hockey, a life in hockey. Uh, a lot of times I think about the various roles that contribute to success, goaltending, strength up the middle. But for me, a favorite has always been defense uh, and a tandem that works well. So both Akeem and Matt are defensemen. Uh, when you have those two reading off one another, when you have those examples of trust and respect, it's one of my favorite things in the game. And today we have a tremendous D-man tandem. How about Calgary boy, Matt Dumba? He floats it ahead. Sykov into the oh, Minnesota zone. He's wiped out by Dumba. And then when he gets a chance, he'll make you pay. Dumbo scores! Right off the draw! Dumbo with a blast! Across for Dumbo! He scores! Here comes Camilleri to Alou. Gain a little room on Fowler. Plays it, they score! Alou gets his first NHL goal! I'm a kid that was born in Africa. Um, my mom was the only white person in our village in Africa. And we moved to Russia. My dad was one of the only black people in Russia. So I have their perspective on things. I've seen a lot of things with myself and my brother growing up, a lot of racial things. To hockey, Bill Peters is no longer the head coach of the Calgary Flame. If I can bring change to even one or two kids coming up, to not have to go through what I went through, because it was really a tough road. It'll all be worth it. And men, I described you as a great defense tandem. Uh, I always have great respect for when two defensemen get along well. Say it's you and Ryan Suter, Matt, or it could be any example. Uh, and you're obviously spokespersons for the uh, Hockey Diversity Alliance. It's fantastic, Akeem. You've been so busy. Uh, both of you have. I'll start with you, Akeem. Maybe just a, a thought on the bonds or the friendship. It seems like the group of seven, the initial alliance, it has a connection. What's yours with Matt? Oh, it, it, it's been amazing. Um, for the guys in the Alliance I've known for 10 plus years, um, I, I just started getting to know Matt in, in about November and he, he's on, he's awesome. He's, he's honest. Um, he's a young buck in our group, which is, which gives us, gives us a little life. Um, give us, gives us a little vibrancy. Um, outgoing kid, truthful, honest, um, has, has gone through his fair share of, um, um, issues growing up. Um, that I just recently learned about. Um, uh, we like to say that we're we're six uh, players that are black, and Matt's the Filipino one. But it, it's been tough growing up for him too. Um, from what I'm hearing from him, it's, um, it's it's tough when you're you're Asian, but then you don't get accepted by Asians. You don't get accepted by the blacks. You don't get accepted as by the whites. So for him, um, I'm super sensitive to his um, upbringing. Um, it's, it, 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 it's a really interesting past. Um, if anyone ever gets a chance to learn it and I'm honored to be on this, on this team with him, um, and guys like Wayne Simmons, Chris Stewart, uh, Joel Ward, Trevor Daly, I've known since I was nine years old. Um, and all those guys for 10 plus years, um, Evander Kane, um, we just got a great group. Um, we have vets, we have young guys and, um, we got, I think friendships that will definitely last a lifetime. Matt, there's no question, Nakeem's background, having a mom and dad with different backgrounds, uh, really imbues his wisdom, and it's the same story for you. So, so tell the viewer uh, the story of your mom and your dad. Yeah, um, my mom, um, just my mom's side of the family is kind of the crazy story. Um, 
she was adopted when she was no more than a month or two old um, into a family um, of all different races. Um, so I have First Nations cousins. I have um, Black cousins, um, Jamaican. Um, I have Chinese cousins. Um, so really all of us together make up our family and it's kind of crazy <laughs> going back, going back home and kind of having family reunions. Um, because it is uh, just kind of a melting pot of different cultures. Um, but that's just what I grew up with. Um, it's hard to, hard to ex explain that um, always to people and why I have so much um, love and support for, you know, all the different, all the different races and, and people um, within them. But um, that's just what, what I saw when I was, when I was little and we didn't, uh, we didn't even really even think of color until, um, until I was younger and, and started facing um, some difficult stuff on the ice and um, just hearing all the stories from my family and what they've gone through is why I'm so happy to be a part of this alliance. And, you know, that's what I want to stand up for and, uh, and support. Well, your father is what German and Romanian ancestry. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's, German. that's, that's the gamut right there. And that, I guess, you know, Akeem, I'll go with you first because Nigeria and uh, Ukraine, uh, you, kind of understand that we're hardwired to not understand or fear what's different. Uh, but your mom and dad would have had a great uh, education in how to deal with that. And how did they pass that on to you? So, yeah, um, I, I was brought up to never look at race. Um, that was, that was preached very heavily in, in, in my household. Um, obviously what my dad and my mom faced individually is super inspiring to me because I, I, like I said to you, when we did the hockey night in Canada, I see things from both sides of the spectrum. Um, my dad was one of the only black people in the Soviet union in the seventies and eighties. So um, talk about it in the players tribune where he'd get strip searched by cops and he'd get robbed all the time. And it's, it's a difficult place to be in when you're completely alone. But on the other side of things, my mom lived in Nigeria for a long time because that's where I was born. And she was the only white person in our village and living in Africa. So the racism goes both ways. Um, so I think I'm fortunate enough to see that um, racism happens in all avenues of life. It happens in tribes. It happens in, it happens everywhere. Um, so I, I look at things. Um, I try to look at things from the outside. Um, and like I said, I think the goal of our, of, of our alliance here is just to allow people to see past color and see past um, generally just what you look like and just look at the human being, look at the inside of a person. And I think that's super important to all of us. Matt, do you want to echo that or go on about that? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I guess one of the, one of the crazy stories that just my mom and dad had shared with me um, through all of this is in 93 when, when, um, they were having their honeymoon actually. And their honeymoon was, they're making their way from Regina all the way out to the West coast and down to California. Um, and it was actually during the same times as um, the Rodney King, um, the beatings and the riots uh, started coming up. And <clears throat> because of my mom's darker skin, um, seeing an interracial couple together um, in some of the places going through like Salt Lake City. And then as they got closer to California, they weren't getting service at restaurants. Um, people were turning them away a lot of places or saying, um, you know, or just making them feel unwelcome. And to know that my parents went through that and, you know, they turned around because they were just um, concerned about their own safety. Um, but just to know that, you know, they went through something like that, it, it gives me chills, you know, and just hearing all the stories that, have come up from um, the HD, HDA and hearing everyone express that it just kind of rekindles the stories that I have from, you know, my, uh, my childhood. And that's why, I, that's why I want, that's why I feel so passionate about this group. And that's why I think we can make such a big change in our game. And, you know, just talking about it now is, is like giving me goosebumps because I know how much, um, I know how much change there needs to be in our game. And to eradicate racism, it, it will take years. But I want to stand on the front lines of that with with Akeem, with you know the other groups, of, uh, the other people on our committee, and you know whoever um, 
whoever wants to, to back us uh, through that. Um, I think there's power in numbers and I'm just excited to see what we can do. Akeem, it's been much talked about. Colin, uh, Pat, uh, you, you went to Colin uh, Kaepernick uh, back in uh, right after we spoke. Uh, I would love to know how he sort of has taken you through the steps. Uh, you know, I'll give you an example. Uh, I have a book here. It's called The New Jim Crow. And this is about uh, the prison system. It's about systemic racism. And boy, you try to explain that uh, to uh, white folks. Uh, it's just, it's difficult. Uh, so it's about who has power. That's what you made clear in your article in the Tribune. Uh, and this was about campaigns and then the next step, social justice. What did Kaepernick say about keys to the deal? So, yeah, I mean, I think people would just be so, I don't want to say surprised, but um, taken back by how, how thoughtful he is. Um, and I think uh, Matt will touch on this after because I got him on the call with all of us right before we announced. Um, he, every conversation I have with him, it's not a five, 10 minute conversation. It's, it's, it's an hour, it's an hour and a half at all, all, all times of the day. Um, and he's really taken to learning about um, segregation and just black lives and, and, and what we, our ancestors and have, have, have been through. Um, so just to hear his um, insights and thoughts on everything has been, has been invaluable for me. Um, I think for us as a group, he, he preached staying united. Um, he feels that um, for a long time, that's one thing that has kind of held um, people of color back is obviously you're going through so much. So it's tough speaking out on issues when um, laws are against you, people are against you, policies are against you. So the biggest thing is just to stay united in your messaging. Um, what I take from him um, is look how long it's taken from him to be from the first steps of him coming out and kneeling to being called someone that doesn't respect the American flag, to the president coming out and saying negative things, to being blackballed by the National Hawk, by the National Football League, to four years later, or five years later, that started in 2016, that he's finally getting the praise that he deserves and what he's been talking about for so long. Um, I think it's it to me, it's been unfortunate that I feel like the the murder of George Floyd has kind of um, make made this conversation rise to the top. Um, it's unfortunate it took this long, but every day I continue to learn. Uh, we had an, another long conversation with him last night. And I, to be honest, I want to be honest with everyone too. I'm educating myself in this as well. I can talk about my own experiences with race and everything I've been through. And my parents can take, tell me a lot, but I think it's really important for you to take a look at what's been going on for hundreds and hundreds of years of how land was taken over by how land was taken over from, from Caucasian people um, from the blacks and the natives. And, and we have an issue here in Canada as well. I mean, mm -hmm. the indigenous problem in Canada is really, really bad. Um, I've taken the last couple of months to really learn about the, some of the issues that they're still having, their, the, their environment they're living in and reserves. It's just, it, it's sad. It's really sad. Um, so just to answer your question, I mean, uh, we talk about all, all, all aspects of things and just how policies are made, um, how much power the people at the top have, um, and things are systematic. Um, we look at the prison system. Um, we look at um, the hierarchy of, of jobs between white people and black people. And this is a tough thing to fix because this has been going on for so long. Mm -hmm. But I feel like what we're doing is, is not a good start, but it's a good continuation of some of the great people that we've had to start this conversation from Martin Luther King to Malcolm X to Nelson Mandela. And I feel like we want to continue that. And at the end of the day, we don't want to be greater than white people or we don't want to be greater than anybody else. We just want to be all even and just look at as all equals as human beings. Matt, do you want to go on that? Um, yeah, I think, I think it, Akeem said it, uh, he, he said it great. Um, we're, we're fighting to, to remove racism from our game, to eradicate it. And I think we, where we're, where we're going to start is those grassroot, grassroot, um, hockey and then minor hockey. Um, because I think racism is something that you learn. And so as Akeem and all of us are trying to read as much as we can and learn and listen, um, I think a big thing will fall back on teaching our youth, um, teaching our youth to love, love one another and, um, not see race uh, at all. And, um, 
you know, hopefully we look back 10, you know, 20 years from now and it's, it literally is just the stories of what, you know, some of us had to go through um, to get to this point and our kids, their kids, you know, they don't have to face any of that. And, you know, hearing some of the guys um, in our group um, with kids, listen to Trevor Daly, um, you know, be on a call and, you know, see his kids playing on the sport court in front of us. And then he sent a picture in our group chat of his son and he's shooting pucks um, on the sport court. And he says, I hope he doesn't have to go through mm-hmm. the same things we, we all have. And that's the goal. Like, so I think we keep learning, keep, keep listening. Conversations just like this. Um, I know I've had some crazy conversations with some of my friends that have, you know, sparked tears, sparked, you know, hugs, laughs, you know, looking back on times that, um, you know, maybe I shouldn't, I shouldn't have had to go through, but, you know, made a stronger friend. So I think that's what, that's what it can do for people when they do step outside of their comfort zones and have these talks. So, um, just more, more power to people having these uncomfortable um, talks and, you know, just listening. You told a great story to Tim and said about Dylan Hetherington. Go on about that. Yeah. Um, Dylan, my, one of my best friends um, ever, you know, growing up, he is a year younger than me. He played on my team every second year. We played on the same summer hockey team because he was really good. So he got to play up with us. Um, and there's just, we, we had talked with our friends about, you know, all this through the last couple of weeks. And um, we were working out the other day in the garage and we just got finished. I'm kind of gassed after my set. And he's like, hey, like, kind of help me up. And just, we sat down on the bench together and he's like, I don't know. I can't point a specific time where this has happened, but I know through hockey, and you know trying to fit in or um whatever it may be the forces around it he's like i have maybe said something that is not right or hurt you in a way indirectly or or directly he's like i'm not even sure but i know now hearing all this and learning and continuing to read he says i know now i stand with you i back everything you're doing and he's telling me this and i'm like he's kind of tearing up. He's, he doesn't know how to express his feelings, but he's just trying to pour everything out to me. And, you know, we just had this hug and those are, those are the the conversations people need to have. And, you know, there's someone like him, big white farm boy um, for him to say that. And, you know, it's just so genuine. Um, I know there's tons, there's as many, as many people, as there is out who are bigots and racist, there's way more people uh, like my, my boy Dylan and people who are willing to accept change and learn and, and love. So um, that, was, that was pretty crazy. And I told him that I mentioned that on, uh, on the air and he, he got a little uncomfortable, but um, I was just like, that's what people need to hear. And that's what people need to generate um, with their friends and family as well. So. Um, I hope that little story uh, can go a long way. It's a little big story. I, I loved hearing it. And uh, Dylan, yeah, our, our hearts uh, go out to share that with you just because of the joy it brings. Uh, Akeem, do you have one like that? Or, uh, or you can go into, you know, your work with uh, the young hockey and, and with women's hockey. And with the, you made a great point in the Tribune about those who feel oppressed or marginalized, you, you hear from them a lot. But they were the only ones for the, because most of us, we're afraid in the ivory tower of either the NHL or broadcasting the NHL. What are we going to do? How far are we going to go? Right. You go ahead. Um, one thing, I mean, to, I, I don't think I'm going to um, one up the Matt story there. That was, that was awesome. It gave me a little shiver here and I was actually hot before that. So that, that was awesome. Um, <laughs> one, one, one that touched me was uh, Logan Couture. Um, I, I've known Logan. He's probably, one of the people that I met first in this game, we played summer hockey together when we were about 11 years old for a team called the ultimate storm. I remember his dad driving us to tournaments in Quebec and um, he shot me a text right before um, he sent the tweet out of support um, and what we're doing um, about just, Hey, um, I didn't understand. Um, I didn't take the time to understand. It's just because not, not because any, and that's the thing isn't people, it's hard to relate to something that you don't know. And that's why I don't get upset at people for the fact of that. Like, look at the minor hockey team I played on, on the Marlies. We had, I think five or six NHLers. 
and they never treated me with nothing but respect. But when I was going through issues, it's hard for them to relate to what I'm going through because they just don't understand it. And it's not a knock on them. But when Logan said that he appreciated me for the, for the hazing situation and kind of that I help players not have to go through what I went through with, with, with Steve Downey, that really touched me because that's something no one's ever said to me. Um, so that, 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 that really meant a lot to me. Um, so I want to tell that story, but what, what was your, the second part of your question? Well, just really to get a story out of you on that, it was the important part of it. And, uh, and again, just your love of the game and what you're doing with the NHL and how you're trying to expand the alliance uh, to include, as you said, Matt, Tim said, the more the merrier, you know, this isn't just you seven, but it is, uh, you know, you're kind of a core group of fellows who bonded together. Tell me what you're doing, you know, what, what your plan is there. So, yeah, that's an important thing. I'm glad that you're touching on it. Um, obviously we've gotten a little bit of, uh, a, a blowback in the fact that there's no women and, 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 and um, people from other groups on board, but that's, that's not to say that we don't have that in plans. We've been in talk, talks with uh, people from the LGBTQ community. We've talked to a, a few prominent women, um, some in the hall of fame. Um, we're talking to people from all sorts of, from all different aspects of life. And we just felt that it was important that as a core group that we start this, not, but it doesn't mean that we're not going to include everybody into it. Um, we got together. The other thing that people need to understand, it's really hard for this to plan, like just to get seven of us on zoom calls or get seven of us to agree on something is it, it, it's a lot harder than people think <laughs> seven different minds, seven guys think alike. And sometimes a lot of the time Matt, Matt Matt's phone's not working. Right. So we, we, we got to wait for him <laughs> to jump on, jump on the zoom calls. Um, <laughs> But in saying that, we, we're in touch with people because we need to hear different perspectives. I can't feel what women have felt in this game for, for a very long time. I can't feel what um, the LGBTQ community goes through because it's hard for me to relate to that. So I think it's super important for us to get um, perspectives from people from all walks of life. And that's what we're, that's what we're hoping to do. As to what we're doing, um, the big thing for us is grassroots. Um, Matt touched on that. That that hits me super close to home. As as many people know, I, I didn't grow up with much. Um, I lived in a 500 square foot apartment with uh, in, just on the third floor in one room growing up on government assistance and welfare. So um, if it wasn't for, for the help of minor hockey and, and, and organizations and some parents, I would have never played this game. So that, that bugs me a lot that kids are eliminated right away. And the pricing for hockey just continues to go up and up. So it's a, it's a game for privilege. It's what it is. And that's right in there in the beginning is that where, where things need to change because we have a lot of potential superstars that just can't afford to play the game. And then going from there. Um, and I think Matt may be, if not the best person in our group for the fact that I, we want to promote personality. We want to promote the fact that you can listen to all types of music. We want to promote the fact that you can dress with any in, in a different way. You don't have to always be 100% straight lace. Um, it's just personality. And I think in doing that, it, it, it brings in different cultures. You might have a kid from Compton, California, look at Matt Dumba and be like, Matt's got tattoos. He's cool. He's got great style. I can see myself being Matt Dumba. And I don't think we have enough of that right now. And that's another thing that we're trying to promote as well. I think it's a huge point, Akeem. For me, uh, control and trust are uh, linked. If you trust someone, you'll hand off control. So if uh, you'd have been able to play your music, if there was trust, uh, but for whatever reason, it wasn't existing. Uh, and that's, that's a huge, so Matt, you go on about that, if you will. Um, yeah, I think, I think, you know, in our mission statement, um, that's one of our biggest points is bringing in grassroots hockey. And I think we've all felt that um, the same way. Like it literally took a village to get me through hockey took, you know, shout out to Pat Lawton and the, the, owner of Crow Child Twin Arena, who let my parents slide on registration for months and years. You know, he, all the people who, you know, gave me equipment. Um, my grandma, like, digging into the savings to get me, get me a new helmet, you know, like, I, you know, I ne never, um, you never, like, understand the appreciation I have to those people, um, you know, who made a difference um, and just my upbringing and being able to, to be the person I am today and the hockey player that I am. Cause if there wasn't, 
and my mom and dad were just left to this, I, I probably wouldn't have played the game. Um, saying that because my dad was working every job he could possibly get to pay for hockey. And it was always about that. You know, it was always about, you know, I love the game so much and I could see my parents, you know, just scratch and claw and make ends meet to get me to play hockey because I loved it so much. So I don't want kids to have to go through that. Um, you know, I want this sport to be accessible to all. Um, just like, just like you can pick up, you know, a football or soccer ball. I know there's more that goes with that, but I want kids to be able to pick up a stick and it's not, not $400 in their hand and they're scared of using it outside. You know, I, you know, you can have sticks and, and play. Um, so grassroots hockey and bringing guys together like that. Um, that's, that's what, what really hits home for me. So I, uh, I'm, I'm super pumped that we can be involved in our, our communities like that and, you know, make a difference. So you ended Ron, up at it. Ed, oh, go ahead, team. Yep. Sorry, I don't mean to run, uh, cut you off, Ron, but one thing I wanted to touch on is, and it's kind of um, telling um, this, obviously, a little bit that I want to say here, but I want to include the other guys in. And it's just telling of just going back to what we've all went through. Um, Trevor Daly grew up in Regent Park, not much with a mo with just a mother. Joel Ward barely made ends meet to play hockey, used to sleep in his mom's. Um, she worked in the hospital, used to sleep in, in, in beds in the hospital, and she'd take him to hockey in the morning. Chris Stewart grew up in, in a motel room. Um, Wayne Simmons, another Scarborough boy, didn't grow up with much. Matt Dumba story, um, myself. Evander, obviously, as um, people say things negatively about his personality and outgoing. Um, and we feel that that has to do with race, too. We feel that if I was a Caucasian person doing some of the things Evander does, it wouldn't be looked at the same way. Um, and we feel like he's a great guy to promote personality. So you just look at our just our little group of seven, and we've all dealt with the same kind of things. But if we just go literally to our teammates sitting next to us in our stalls and some of the guys I grew up with, the Taveras and the Gagnes, they've never faced that. So we just look at ourselves and we're saying, well, why did we face it? There's 20 to 30 of us playing at the highest levels in the world. And we literally almost all face these same issues, but our teammates sitting right beside us can't say the same thing. And I think that's just telling of the position that we're in. Well, you know, my blind spot was a simple revelation. I thought I was pretty uh, good about loving every human on the planet and then we do our hometown hockey and we have 300 kids over the course of six seasons, pick the three stars. And somebody says, well, how many kids of color? I said, oh, geez, I never thought of that. Right. Because I didn't yeah. know to think of yeah. that. It was uh, just yeah. a great. Hey, uh, one last thing, Matt. Uh, Edge School in Calgary. Matt Brown is a friend. I rely on him a lot for ethical consideration. Uh, and he knows you at the school as a 13 year old boy on the Olympic floor hockey, you know, floor being tested. I mean, they were coming at you. I, I don't know if that was a. Racism. I think it was just because you were a good little hockey player and they were going to get you. You tell me, but you, you got to edge. That's a great leap from, you know, what sounds like humble roots to a pretty good. Program. Yeah. Humble roots. And then uh, some great people at edge get me in there and get me, you know, on a, you know, like full scholarship, um, you know, and, you know, with, without the edge um, school, I don't know what hockey player I would be. <clears throat> and so I was, I was fortunate enough to go there with, you know, some good friend and make some really good friends and just be on the ice every day. Cause that's what, that's what I loved. Um, you know, when I was little, it was, it was hockey, hockey over everything. So, um, you know, Brownie's been awesome. He, he's always someone you can count on. Um, he's, he's literally a rock at that, at that, at that school. Um, he's, uh, he's a man that, uh, I respect for sure. So, um, having him there and having him just kind of watch me through, you know, just growing up. Uh, it's been pretty cool how our friendship has built over the years. Yeah, he loves your mom and dad too. And lastly, Akeem, you love the game so much. And that that's the, that's the hardest thing when I listen to your story is, you know, what you feel you were denied. Uh, but you're still active. And how was the Czech, you know, experience? And, and what are you going to do going forward? Yeah, I, I'm going to continue to play. I mean, at 30 now, like I'm going to continue to play as long as I can. I feel awesome. Uh, I feel great. Um, I feel like I'm in the best shape of my life. Um, I'm like a kid in a candy store that always thinks he might get another candy. Uh, and that's how I look at uh, an opportunity of playing in the, in the NHL. Um, that's kind of what I go to bed thinking about all the time. Um, if it happens, amazing. If it doesn't, um, 
I, I, I'm excited to be part of this team. Um, I, I'm honored to be part of this team. Um, I kind of did a little math with my girlfriend yesterday. We have 4,500 NHL games played. I, I can't add much to that. And I apologize to the boys about it all the time, but I'm, I'm honored to be with um, a Stanley Cup champion and one of the exciting defensemen in our league today. Um, and we're excited to make change. Um, and we're passionate about this. I think that's what's the most important thing about it. We've all dealt with um, issues on race and we feel like there's no other sounding board that could be better to speak on these issues than, than, than us. And uh, we're excited to get women involved and we're excited to get people from all different spectrums of the world involved. And we're just excited to go on this journey. Okay, Matt, fantastic. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. This was awesome. Thank, Thank you, Ron. Can't wait to see both men back on the ice. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Akeem. We are back Friday evening, 7 o'clock Eastern, 4 Pacific, with another In Conversation. As always, we'll leave you with a song lyric. And today, believe in things that you don't understand, then you suffer. Superstition ain't that way. The amazing Stevie Wonder. Thanks for enjoying today. So long.